The purpose of this video is to help us with our understanding of these four terms, true course, magnetic course, true heading, and magnetic heading. We will have to discuss wind correction angle briefly, and we're using as an example a um, hypothetical route from Goose Bay up here to Wasilla in Alaska, and that would be on your Anchorage sectional. Of note over here, you'll see that we've got this isogonic line right here, 21 degrees east, um, and that's, well, we're going to need that in a little bit. But let's get to this, and you know, let's get the map out of here and simplify the drawing. Now, I guess we need those latitude and longitude lines, but um, no, I'm going to get rid of them. Let's get rid of all this, and we're going to draw a grid, a Cartesian grid, and we're going to say it's oriented to the cardinal headings. There, I like that. So now, we have our aircraft, and it's going to travel this route right now in a no wind condition. And let's see, and, and we're going to, well, where do we get, where do we start here? Okay, I guess we would well, start by measuring this. You would have your plotter, and you all know how to measure with your plotter. And you would find that this is a 40 degree angle here. Um, that's for another video, or you already know how to use a plotter, or you could even use a protractor for that matter. And you're really measuring this angle against any of these of the various lines of longitude and your course. And from this sweeping clockwise, that would be 40 degrees. So your true course is 40 degrees. Now, um, let's pretend we're not we don't know we're in Alaska yet, so I'm gonna take this away. And I want to say, uh, let's do this. Let's superimpose another grid. Because this is what happens when I have variation in two different directions. This is, well, let's say this is magnetic variation, what us old timers call declination to the, well, over here. It's to the west. Ironically, this occurs on the east coast. You could just imagine that you could just navigate off that orange grid, just like orienteering students do. Or if you're on the west coast, you might visualize this. We have an eastward, about like that. A bit of an eastward declination or magnetic variation. Well, okay, that might be a bit confusing to you. So let's, let's, um, let's just do this. Let's just take this out for now. Get rid of that grid. And let's put in our course. Now, if I look at my course, and I turn this way, I can see that the angle, well, I see it, that was my true course, was relative to true north, but now I want relative to magnetic north. Okay, I'll put the grid back in. You can see the angle between here has gotten bigger. It's increased. So this west variation, my magnetic course is going to be my true course plus my variation. Now, you know where this is going. By contrast, I turn it the other way. And now you can see that the angle between, let's say, here and here, that angle has gotten smaller because I'm measuring this angle. And that would be my magnetic course on, on an eastward variation. You see, I took this angle and I subtracted the red bit, and I came down to this angle. So if you draw yourself this little picture, it may be helpful as far as understanding which one, you know, whether or not you're supposed to add or subtract. I don't like just following dumb rules. It's a lot easier if you can sketch a picture, and that way you'll know it on the inside. So uh, then I guess it seems like we've got this all figured out, except we have some things that are, um, you know, we've got something else to do here. Um, we're first going to put in, okay, let's make it realistic. We're going to go 21 degrees because I'm going back to my isogonic line, which tells me 
that I have 21 degrees of east variation and that means in this area so close enough for this entire area and I can I now have a formula here I say hmm I'll take that and I am going to take the 40 I'll subtract 21 so I have a magnetic course of 1 9 -er, or 19 degrees seems like we're set but um, but you know hold on a second nobody said anything about wind so now it's going to change everything and I'm going to have to clean up the drawing a little bit more here let's get rid of the grids let's get rid of both of them even and um, let's see we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of this so now what happens when I want to add on top of this a wind correction angle because after all it's not as though my airplane is going to be doing this all the time that'd be nice but that's not real so let's imagine two scenarios suppose I have a wind from the left and I'm just going to arbitrarily say it was seven degrees we figured that out on our E6B and then we, we changed our course well what did we do there well what I think we did is we said okay we're going to have to steer a little bit to the left so I'm looking at that and saying well this brown this represents my true course and this arc represents my magnetic course there's two ways I can get there <clears throat> again I could take my true course oh wait a minute, now I'm getting dizzy here or for my true heading that is I could take my true course and that's this well no 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 that's this angle and I'm going to subtract or turn to the left seven degrees and I'll get 33 or 33 uh, degrees so that would be for a variation to the or for a wind correction angle to the left it looks something like that now um, that would be my true heading but my magnetic heading that's what I'm actually going to see on my DG now for that I'm going to take my true heading again that was the 33 degrees formed by this angle and now I've got to subtract this angle and I'm left with this little orange arc right here this is the angle I'm after that's going to be my magnetic heading now some of you probably said hey I already knew the magnetic course well that's true if you already knew the magnetic course that means you're starting you know this angle from magnetic north to your course why don't you just subtract this little bit here can you do that and sure thing it's going to work out just like that and you'll get the same answer both ways now um, honestly I almost never do this and the reason is the winds that winds aloft are going to be reported in true they're going to be reported in true north so most often I'm going to be doing this I'm going to be taking my true heading and um, and then I'm going to find my magnetic heading from there but you see both methods do work so let's let's start this up let's clean this up and make a wind correction angle from the right so now imagine instead my aircraft's going this way where I have to point into the wind because I've got a wind correction angle from the right and I just so I can see now I'm generating a bigger measurement you can see this angle would represent my well let me see that would be my true heading I'm going to have to subtract this this would end up being my magnetic heading so let's let's do the arithmetic here or show the arithmetic again my true course plus my wind correction angle my true course is this angle right here and if I were to show those little arcs there um, then my true course from here to here 
I add this little bit, this little sliver from the green to the magenta, and now I have this measurement. And this measurement is going to be my true heading. In this example, hypothetical example, I have a wind correction angle of 49, or sorry, 9 degrees that you calculated. So again, it looks like that. So what do we do next? Well, um, we could take that. We're going to take that magnetic heading, and I'm going to subtract this angle, this angle right here, because you can see that the angle that I'm looking for is going to be less than this angle, the angle relative to true. When you sketch the picture, it just makes sense. So I can see 49 minus 21. I now have a magnetic heading. That's what I'm looking for in my DH for, um, or sorry, DG, to be uh, 2 8 degrees. Then I could do it this way. I could have said magnetic course plus 9, also 28. 